Davis Ford in Fulton is built on customer service. It's been a founding pillar of Davis Ford since opening our doors in 1964. We are proud to announce winning the 2022 Ford President's Award for customer service. Davis Ford was the only dealer in Mississippi to achieve this award, marking a record-setting 20th time. Davis Ford would like to say thank you to our valued customers. We wouldn't be here without you and your commitment to us. Guaranteed Bank, formerly known as First American National Bank, is a proud supporter of ICC Athletics. Visit gbtonline.com. Guaranteed Bank, we're more than a bank, we're a community. Listen up. Your journey at Itawamba Community College begins now. Registration for ICC's orientation sessions is now open. This free, required, and incredibly beneficial event is a must. Discover the ins and outs of campus life, create your class schedule for the fall, spots are filling up fast, so don't miss out. Register for one of our spring or summer sessions at www.iccms.edu slash orientation. Davis Ford in Fulton is built on customer service. It's been a founding pillar of Davis Ford since opening our doors in 1964. We are proud to announce winning the 2022 Ford President's Award for customer service. Davis Ford was the only dealer in Mississippi to achieve this award, marking a record setting 20th time. Davis Ford would like to say thank you to our valued customers. We wouldn't be here without you and your commitment to us. And welcome back as we're just moments away from that Guarantee Bank opening pitch here in Tupelo. Adam Gore, Michael Upton bringing this action. Before we do that, uh, we do have a little bit of news. we got the newest member of the ICC family, uh, Duke James, our uh, assistant football coach, Grant Kimberlin, and his wife announced the birth of their uh, son a little while ago. So congratulations to the Kimberlins, and welcome to the family, Duke. Very excited for them. So we're just moments away from that guaranteed bank opening pitch, and looks like we're going to get ready to throw this one down here as we got a new pitcher, or not actually a new pitcher, but it'll be Turner pitching here in game one, getting the start for the Indians. And, Michael, I know you've got some stats there on her. Sure, this is going to be Turner's fifth appearance, fifth game started. She comes in with a one-and-three record, two complete games. She's pitched 19 innings, has a 5.16 ERA, has given up 22 hits, 22 runs, only 14 of those earned, has walked 24 and struck out 15. And so we're just moments away from that guaranteed bank opening pitch here for game two. It'll be Skag starting things off here. And boy, I tell you what, she was a tough out in game one. She was. They've moved her in that lineup from second to first, and she was on base every time, so that's definitely where you want to start. That guaranteed bank opening pitch, missing for a ball, comes your way at 451. Only about 51 minutes behind schedule, not too bad. Hey, we got a good, exciting game the first round. Swing and a miss there for strike one for Skaggs here. We'll give you the starting lineups in the exchange of the inning. Again, we welcome those that are watching in favor of the Blue Angels this afternoon. Hope. All is well in your part of the world as that pitch missing low and outside. Two and one is the count. And also, hello to the members of the ICC family that are checking in, unable to make the trip out here to Tupelo this afternoon. Four o'clock, well, I'll call it 
I say we got eight minutes away from the evening, so I'll call it pre evening right now. As there's a swing and a miss, four strike three. First time for Skaggs to get out today, or for the year for that matter. Yep. Yeah. But for her to go four for four in the first game, a good start for the Indians and for Turner on the mound to get her out as the leadoff batter. I believe this is going to be Milligan coming to the plate now. As she takes a look at that first pitch, missing low for a ball. She and Skaggs just swap positions. She was the leadoff batter for Kaskaskia in the first game. She went two for four, excuse me, one for three with a single and a fielder's choice. A couple of runs scored and an RBI. Swing and a miss. He misses the count up now at one and one here for Milligan. ICC will be back in action tomorrow as well when they play South Suburban. Part of a six-game stretch for our friends from South Chicago. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? 2-1 now is the count. I believe 1 o'clock is the scheduled opening pitch there tomorrow. Sounds good anyway. Whatever time you tell me to be here. There's a ground ball right back to the pitcher. Great job there by Turner defending her position. Grabs it, tosses it over 1-3 to three on the putout for out number two. Now this is Colvis coming back to the dish here. Well, I should say coming to the plate for the first time here in game two. In game one, she was 0 for 3, but did have a walk and a run scored. That pitch missing low for a ball. 1-0 is the count here to Colvis. That one couldn't quite climb the ladder. Now 2-0 now is the count here. So we mentioned Turner in the circle. Shaw got the win in game one, went the distance to be able to pick up the win. There's a ground ball, but fouled straight back. Strike one, 2-1 and one now is the count. Good low inside pitch that Colvis got a piece of. Just fouls it off. Our next broadcast will be tomorrow with softball, but then Tuesday we'll have basketball back here on the Red Channel. Is that pitch missing low? Three and one now is the count. We'll also be hosting the Class 1A and 3A high school basketball quarterfinals next week at the college. Uh, you can check out the Daily Journal for information on that. This time of year, it's always something. Is that pitch just missing? Mm, very close. And that'll very be a two-out walk. So now this is going to bring up Russell to the plate. Well, we saw what she did in her first at bat. She's got power, but she was quiet after that. She hit a three-run home run in game one. But ICC bounced back and kept her back quiet the rest of the day. So runner on first, two outs. Line drive and it's right through the wickets of the second baseman. Out to the fence and this is going to score a run. They're going to try to get it three with her. Nope, she's going to hold up at second. And another clutch hit there by Russell. Boy, I tell you what. Thompson, I don't know that she saw that one. That one came off the bat so hard. It did indeed, and you know, once it went through her legs and went to the outfield, it was into the gap, and so it took a while for Sammy Day to get over there and get that in. So one nothing now is the score, and now this is going to bring up Phil Pot to the plate. Here's the wind picking up once again here at the ballpark. Phil Pot in right field this game. Hacks at that one goes foul for strike one. She played right field and pitched and was in the flex position in game one. Went 0 for 4 at the plate. Two strikeouts, uh, two ground outs. Got a runner at second, one to nothing. There's two outs here in the top of the first inning. As we said, we'll give you the lineups for both teams in the exchange of the innings here. Turner trying to get out of this inning with minimum damage done. That pitch, just missing low. One and one now is the count. She is working to find those corners to see what this umpire is going to give her. I think she'll dial it in like Shaw did in game one. So one ball, one strike. 
And two outs here in the top of the first. That pitch missing inside. Two and one now is the count. Again, we do have a mic extended outside to try to keep uh, some gnat sound, so we have to be careful once we start hearing conversations as there's a ground ball. Gloved over at second, throw over in time for the put out. Four to three, nice job there of getting out of the inning with minimum damage done there in the top of the first. Michael, tell us about today's Coca-Cola lineups for both squads. All right, we'll start with Kakaskia. And uh, as you saw that inning, leading off was Rancy Skaggs in center field. She was followed by the left fielder, Katie Mulligan. Batting third was the shortstop, Ashlyn Colvis. Batting fourth and playing third base in this game is Amber Russell. And granted out last there, the right fielder, Gracie Philpot. Batting six will be um, Emily Curtis in the, defense, uh, the designated player position. Uh, the pitcher for Kaskaskia in this game is going to be Maddie Probus, batting in the seventh spot. Playing first base and batting in the eighth position is going to be Macy Jett. And batting in the bottom of the order and catching in this game is Mackenzie Jackson. The flex player for, their, for the Blue Angels is the second baseman, Macy Lentz. That is your starting lineup there for the Blue Angels. And now the starting lineup for your ICC Indians. ICC and Coke, now that's a winning combination. And Coach Ernest and Coach Hulk hope they've got that same winning combination put together here in game two. Leading off for the Indians is going to be your pitcher in game two, Hallie Turner. Batting second is the center fielder, Sammy Day Jones. Batting third will be your first baseman, Jesse Smith. Batting fourth in the, def in the def designated player uh, position, Riley Tyree. Batting fifth is your right fielder, Julia Shaw. Batting sixth and playing third base is Avery Wolf. Batting seventh and playing second in this game will be Emma, Ro Emma Rose Thompson. Batting eighth will be the left fielder, uh, Lake, Lakeland Nichols, getting the start in this game. And at the bottom of the order will be Cooper, the shortstop, who moves from second to short in this game. Your flex player for ICC is McLean, the catcher. As we mentioned, ICC and Coke, always a winning combination. We appreciate all the fine folks there at Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works for sponsoring today's action here on the ICC Sports Network. Turner will start us off. She takes that pitch low for a ball. This is Probus in the circle. Again, game two for this team, so she has no stats yet. There's a heart shot down the line, and that's going to go for a base hit for sure. Turner's going to turn this one into two, and that's going to be a double to start things off there. Man, that said, I said hurt. Tried to say a hot shot down the line there, but a good start to the inning there for the Indians. Right down the line, shooting past the first baseman. Got into the corner and gave the right fielder a little bit of trouble. Allows her to advance all the way to second. And she never checked up. Matter of fact, as she was rounding first, she was looking for Coach Ernest. I think she was wanting to try to turn that into a triple, but a great job out there in right field to quickly get that one back in. So no outs. Now this should be Sammy Day Jones, the center fielder coming to the plate. That pitch outside for a ball. Sammy went one for three in game one. Got an RBI as well. And so 1-0 is the count here to the sophomore center fielder. That pitch missing low for ball two. If you were to ask Sammy Day Jones, who is your favorite person on campus? Adam Gorby, the first person that comes to mind for her. Got to get her out more. I know, no. She don't like me, I don't like her. No, I'm kidding. She's a good kid. That pitch missing outside. We just have kind of that running joke between the two of us because there was one day we did something in the cafeteria and one of the freshmen were like, does he hate you? And she's like, yes, yes, he does. So we've just ran with it since then. Ball four, good eye on the part of Sammy Day to draw the walk. So now the Indians in business here early. Runners on first and second, no outs. And Jesse Smith coming to the plate. She had a fantastic day at the plate in game one. One of our co-stars of the game, four for five, three runs, three RBIs. She's had a hot start to the season as well. We'll talk about some of those numbers coming in to the year if we still got those kind of hanging around. But she's been one of the better bats to start the season here, more the consistent bats to start the season for the Indians. Yeah, she came into today 
batting 346, had three RBIs, nine hits. First pitch high for a ball. Second pitch hitter. Good job of standing. Not a very fast pitch, but knowing that that one's going to tag you and allow you to get on base. So good job of being a team player there and taking that one. Yeah, that's one of those that if you're going to get hit by a pitch, that's the type of pitch you want to get hit by. Because that was the most off-speedest of off-speed pitches possible. Kind of reminds you of Alex Brown, former ICC Indian that went on to star at UNA. She led the country in hit by pitches as a freshman and a sophomore. Hard shop past the first baseman. One run will score. Two runs will score, and that'll be a single advance on the throw. It was off the glove of the first baseman, but not an error when you get the infield in as tight as they were. Two RBIs, and then a heads-up play there to kind of hang around at first. And then once they saw the throw was heading to third, Tyree was able to advance there. So Riley, another one of those hot bats to start the season, coming up clutch there for the Indians. 2-1 now is the score. That pitch is missing low, as now this is Shaw at the plate. We got a quick timeout taken here as Keskia wants to talk things over. Let's take a quick timeout here from Guaranteed Bank and be back with more right after this. Guaranteed Bank, formerly known as First American National Bank, is a proud supporter of ICC Athletics. Visit gbtonline.com. Guaranteed Bank, we're more than a bank, we're a community. Welcome back. No changes made there. Kaskia's as coach just wanted to come out and kind of settle the girls down in this situation. Runners on second and third. Still no outs here. ICC leads this one two to one. As Shaw steps to the plate. She had a home run in game one. Takes that first pitch high for a ball. Yeah, she went three for four. Scored, scored three runs. And she's a pretty big bat to have um, the defense playing in so much on her. She can get, get rid of one here. That she's going to score two runs easy. That ball gets away. Smith's going to try to score from third, and she does. Smith showing off the Jets. Scoring on the pass ball. The runner also advances in that situation. And ICC now goes up 3-1. 1-1 to one. One, one is the count. And that pitch in there for a strike. One and two now is the count here on Shaw. Tyree over to third after the pass ball. That one right back up the middle. That's going to be another RBI and a single there for Shaw. Third hit of the game for the Indians. As I said, playing her in more than they probably should have. And so he just gets a good shot up the middle. No one there to even get a chance of getting that till it gets to the center fielder. So third hit of the game here for the Indians. Still no outs here in the inning. Runner at first is Shaw, and now this is going to bring Avery Wolf to the dish. Might have a runner come in. Yes, we will. This is going to be Clemens coming in to run. She is out of Lake Cormorant. Wolf at the plate went uh, two for three in the first game. A single, a double, a walk, a run, and an RBI. That pitch in there for a strike at the knees of Wolf. Wolf kind of just turns around and looks at Coach Ernest and shrugs her shoulder. And Coach Ernest says, let's get after it. 0-1 oh, the count here to Avery. Mentioned she'll continue her career at Bellhaven after her time here at ICC. Shows bunt. It's a foul ball. 0-2 oh, now is the count. Avery also is an outstanding academic student. I know that she's on one of our foundation scholarships and has a very high GPA, so she does the work in the class and on the field both. She'll be a credit to Bellhaven when she gets there. 
So 0-2 is the count here on Wolf. Runner at first, ICC up 4-1. Change up, hangs up, runner goes. The throw down is not in time. And that'll be a stolen base for Clemens. Picked the perfect pitch to steal on that time as it was an off-speed mm -hmm. pitch. But it was a good pitch to throw out of because it was up, so the catcher's motion was coming up out of the stance to get it naturally. So the runner moves now in scoring position. Wolf at the dish. One and two is the count. Ground ball, right side. Beautiful stop by the second baseman. Does allow the runner to advance four to three on the putout. Nice job over there by Lentz to make that sliding stop, keep it in front of her, and gets the first out of the inning. But as we said, the runner does advance over to third. Another scoring opportunity with only one out here. This is Thompson at the dish. Thompson is due. Is that pitch in the dirt for a ball? Yeah, she did get one single in the first game. Other opportunities did not go her way, but they were close ones. As you said, you know, those, those luck situations. Yeah, this one, she's got a dangerous bat. So when it heats up, it's going to be red hot. And that was a healthy swing there. Missing one and one now is the count. One ball, one strike, one out. Runner at third, ICC. Leads this one four to one here in the bottom of the first inning. Pitch high and outside. Great job by the catcher Jackson to climb the ladder and get that one. If not, you feel like Clemens can score from third if the ball gets away. Two one now the count here on Thompson. And that one does get away. Ball takes a high hop and Clemens, she won't even think about sliding. She'll just come on in and score the run. Easily, easily. And so now 5-1, to one, Indians with the lead. Bases empty now. Second time the Indians have been able to score when the ball's got away from the catcher in this inning. Thompson rips that one. It's off the glove of the third baseman. I'm going to go for a single on that one because that was a hard hit ball there. I'll agree with you, Adam. It was a line shot there. Russell, who caught in the first game playing third, did a great job to knock it down, but didn't really have a good opportunity to make a play there. This is going to be Nichols coming to the plate now here for the Indians. One out in the inning, and that might have been good. The ball got passed by that last time, because if not, Clemens, Clemens, and, Clemens excuse me, could have been in a quite a jam there. Is that pitch in there for a strike to Nichols? Nichols did come in as a substitute in game one. She went two for two, a pair of singles, two runs scored, and a stolen base. Got an 0-1 count here. That pitch missing low for a ball. Infield coming in, so the second baseman having, having to cover first there. So Emma Rose able to get a little bit bigger lead than normal on that previous play. One and one now is the count. Again, that one in the dirt, blocked up nicely by Jackson. Jackson has been active behind the home plate here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, she played third base in the first game and swapped positions with Russell, and she's having to work a lot to corral some of these outside pitches. 2-1 now is the count. That one in there for a strike, and the umpire agrees. Evens things up now at 2-2. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. There is a runner at first. Lakin Nichols at the plate here for the Indians. That pitch missing outside. Three and one now goes the, or excuse me, three two now as the count goes full here on Nichols. She's batting in that eight spot. Cooper would be the number nine batter if she was to make it on. There's going to be a foul ball. Good job finding a piece of that one. Like it might have been up in the zone, but it would have been close enough to make the umpire guess. Or not, not necessarily guess, but putting him in a tight position. Would have been a borderline call either way. Yeah. So she fouls it off. We'll stay at a 3-2 count now. And there's strike three. That's what we were saying Oof. on yeah. that previous pitch. The other one's up just a little bit. 
but it was close enough that he does like that outside edge. I'd say probably about a good two or three inches off the plate. As that is the first Renaissance Bank strikeout of the game for Probus. As there's going to be a slow roller to the shortstop. Going to have to hurry just in time as she got her with a good stretch over there at first by Jet. Six to three. But the Indians do put five runs on the board as they send nine batters to the plate there in the bottom of the first. We'll take a timeout. ICC leads it five to one. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Another great Saturday at college football. You're always pushing yourself. There's no time to rest. You keep moving forward. The only thing better than your last accomplishment is your next. What's next? What's next? What's next? So, Allie, what's next? I guess we'll see. Find a bank that's as excited about your future as you are. A bank that asks, What's next? Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Davis Ford in Fulton is built on customer service. It's been a founding pillar of Davis Ford since opening our doors in 1964. We are proud to announce winning the 2022 Ford President's Award for customer service. Davis Ford was the only dealer in Mississippi to achieve this award, marking a record setting 20th time. Davis Ford would like to say thank you to our valued customers. We wouldn't be here without you and your commitment to us. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now to the top of the second inning. Adam Gore, Michael Upton bring you this action this evening here in Tupelo. Some lights are on here at the ballpark. ICC, they won the first game of the day 13-9, trying to get a sweep of Kaskaskia here in game two. Blue Angels trying to find a way to rally here. They trail 5-1 to one after the first inning of play. This will be Curtis coming to the dish here. She's the DP here in game two as that pitch skips across for ball one. In game one, Curtis came in as a relief pitcher. She got one plate appearance where she walked and eventually scored in the sixth inning. So 1-0 is the count. That pitch missing low for a ball as well. 2-0 now the count. We'll be back here tomorrow, ICC in South Suburban, for our afternoon doubleheader. If you're planning on making your way out to the ballpark, do dress accordingly. Was that pitch in there for a strike? It's supposed to be even colder tomorrow. Uh, last I looked, about 27 degrees in the morning when we wake up. Ugh. I say that. I mean, that's what you expect this time of year. We've kind of been spoiled with the weather, to be honest with you. Indeed. Other than that little ice storm in the rain we've had, is that pitch missing 3-1? Temperatures have been very favorable. If you were able to come out and join us on campus Wednesday for baseball, it was an absolutely beautiful day. Not what you'd expect for February, but uh, really enjoyable, really great ball weather. 3-1 pitch, hit right back to Turner. Awkward spin. She's going to have to hurry. Sidearm throw in time. That play was a lot more difficult than it looked like that time. Yeah, ball had a lot of spin on it. English, I think, is what the uh, whole player is called. Yes, if you're playing billiards. As now this will bring up Probus to the plate here for the Blue Angels. She is the pitcher starting this one. What's up? She was the uh, designated player in game one. Went one for two with a single and a strikeout. That first pitch missing. For a ball. Again, we apologize for the randomness uh, that you hear. Uh, as we've got a mic trying to get any type of noise outside the press box as we're in a window that does not open for us up here. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? As Coach Ernest wanting to come out and she's going to have to re that's what she's doing. She's having to re enter her right fielder. Because of the pinch running because situation. Pinch, yep, yep. Yeah. So she's re-entering re Shaw back out there. And so the unplayed umpire will 
relay that message and looks like the game is over over there for Northwest and South Suburban so Michael I'm going to turn it over to you for a little while while I go kill this other live stream sounds good so to reset you here one Stop out the live stream not kill it <laughs> one out in the top of the second Turner pitching for ICC and Probus the pitcher for Kakaskia at the plate Swings through and misses there. That's going to take the count to one and one on Probus. So we were saying she did uh, get a single and a run in one of her plate appearances in the first game. Struck out in her other plate appearance. Pitch a little low into the outside. Runs the count to two and one on Probus. Wolf getting ready to possibly look for a, a slow roller as she... Kind of wanted to play in from third on that one. That pitch inside bounces. But it must have hit her foot because that should have only been a 3-1 by my count. But she runs to first. So either my count was off or she was hit by pitch. What do you want to go there with? I want to say it was a walk because he didn't call for the dead ball. And there was a pitch before Coach Ernest came that out. Is true. So. That is true. I, I may have missed that one on my remarks. So. We'll, 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 we'll blame KB. Why not? So there is a runner on first. Jet is at the plate, takes that first pitch in there for a strike. I do like this home plate umpire a little bit better. Not seeing the, the strike zone, but you can see his strike because he punches the sky. He kind of waits, steps back, and then just straight through the ceiling. As that pitch missing low for a ball. Jet did not bat in the first game. She was... She played first, as she is in this game, but was in the flex position. So this is her first plate appearance of the year. Didn't see the final score, but I do believe that the Northwest Rangers completed the sweep of South Suburbans. There's a strong swing and a miss there. Snap throw back to first is not in time. As one and two is the count. Yeah, they did. Northwest has not posted a final score. Sorry. That ball gets away, and the runner will head to second. Ball in the dirt allows the runner to advance on the wild pitch. But Northwest was up 9-3 to three in the sixth, so I believe you're correct on they probably won that. We just don't have a final score yet. Swing and a miss, four strike three, big time. Renaissance Bank strikeout there of Jet, the second Renaissance Bank strikeout of the day for Turner. Big out there is now with a runner on second. And this should bring up Jackson, who is having to take off a little bit of her catching gear become before coming to the plate. Yeah, it'd be good for Turner just to find the third out here, get out with no damage done in this inning. Strand that. Runner that came by way of walk. That pitch just missing low for a ball. Jackson was a third baseman game one. She had two plate appearances, got a single and a walk, and did score a run. There's a pitch. Second baseman, Thompson, eats it up, throws it over in time. Four to three on the putout to get the Indians out of the slight jam there in the top of the second. 5-1, steal your scores. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. ICC with the lead. We'll take the time out with them and be back with more right after this here on the ICC Sports Network. Your knee is a complex joint with many components, making it vulnerable to a variety of injuries. Some of the most common knee injuries include fractures, dislocations, sprains, and ligament tears. Many knee injuries can successfully be treated with simple measures such as bracing, rehabilitation, and exercise. The other, other injuries may require surgery to correct. At our injury clinic, we commonly see meniscal tears that occur during sports. Tears in the meniscus can occur when twisting, cutting, pivoting, or being tackled. Meniscal tears may also occur as a result of arthritis or aging. Just an awkward twist when getting up from a chair may be enough to cause a tear if the meniscus has weakened with age. The most common symptoms of meniscus tears are pain, stiffness, swelling, catching or locking of your knee, the sensation of your knee giving way, 
and, you, and if you are not able to move your knee through its full range of motion. The RICE protocol is effective for most sports-related injuries. RICE stands for Rest, Ice, Compression, and Elevation. Remember that at the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our story is you. Guaranteed Bank, formerly known as First American National Bank, is a proud supporter of ICC Athletics. Visit gbtonline.com. Guaranteed Bank, we're more than a bank, we're a community. Welcome back, as my mouse did not want to work that time, as clicked every button, but the right one to bring us back out of that timeout. Five to one is your score as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Indians hit nine to the plate in the first. Now, so we'll flip it back to the top of the lineup. Turner, Day Jones, and Smith scheduled up here for the Indians. Turner doubled to start the contest and scored there in the first. Swings at this one. Fouls it out of play. Strike one. Well, unfortunately, I don't know how to turn these lights off up here. So we got a little bit of a reflection in the glass that we're shooting through right now. I think they're all connected, like all the lights to the entire building are connected. Michael offered to go see if he can find it, but we'll be all right. Is that pitch high? One and one now is the count. I'm noticing, folks, that uh, tomorrow's broadcast may be even more interesting. Uh, I'm getting tired. It's been a long week, and I've noticed that the Calhoun has slipped out of me a few times. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, hopefully that does not uh, reoccur. So one and one now is the count. There's a shot, and it's going to get through, and that's going to go for another hit there. Turner with her second hit of the game. I tell you what, she has looked sharp today, Michael. Indeed. You know, anytime you're a pitcher and you can help yourself at the plate, that's always a big bonus. But uh, two for two so far. I try to give some that sound every time I do. Somebody comes by the microphone just playing it safe there. So now this is going to be Sammy Day Jones. She walked and scored a run, part of that five-run fifth inning, or excuse me, first inning for the Indians here in game two. That pitch, high and inside for a ball. Got Rafael Henry shooting highlights out there in center field. I, I will say this folks, I did give him the option of shooting up here or down there, but he said he had his hunting clothes in the vehicle, so he was going to tough it out out there in center field. As that pitch fouled off, one and one now is the count. Yeah, he'll take that extra step, try to get some better coverage for you at home and for our student athletes to really get some great highlights of this matchup today. Well, the fire truck taking off there. Hopefully everything is okay or will be okay soon as that ball in the dirt, two and one now is the count. Yeah, I actually already had one text today saying, is that a firehouse out behind center field? And I responded, yes, it is. It is. We are here on Veterans Park in Tupelo. We appreciate Tupelo Park and Rex for helping accommodate us this season as the field is still under construction or the grandstands and the locker rooms and et cetera are still under construction there at ICC. And we do invite you once we get them open, we'll have a grand opening come out. But if you're in the Fulton area, take the time to drive by and check it out. That is going to be Something special there. Check swing fouled off. Three and two now is the count. If you'd like to uh, have naming rights of that, this is the guy you talk to right here, Michael Upton. Now, I can't afford to do it, but. Oh, uh, there's, there's all kinds of levels, all kinds of opportunities where if someone wants to support the softball team or either one of the tennis teams in uh, different ways with our new complex, we'd be glad to talk with you and show you some options and find a way that you can help support ICC athletics. Dave Jones looks at that pitch and that's going to be ball four. Good job there. Sammy Day, and I'll say this and I'll tell Sammy Day this too and she'll just roll her eyes and laugh when I do. She's not a very patient at bat. She likes to get out there. She's very aggressive. So to see her work the count full and work it in her favor and draw a couple of walks shows signs of uh, growth as a batter, I guess you can say. That pitch high for a ball to Smith, who was hit by a pitch, scored on a pass ball back in the first. Yeah, and that kind of patience is great to see when you're um, second in the lineup and that leadoff person's getting on with no outs. Makes a big difference. 1-0 is the count here to Smith. Uh, took a healthy chop at that one, just couldn't find it. Great location 
on that pitch there by Probus. Evens the count up at one and one. Yeah, you're right. That pitch was nice. Started in and just tailed out and away from the batter. So one one is the count. This pitch fouled back, and now the count will go one and two. Well, again, uh, softball Sunday here on the Red Channel. Basketball Tuesday on the Red Channel. Uh, I know we've got a lot going on Thursday. I think baseball, softball, and basketball are all in action, but I think they're actually all on the road. So we hope you like listening to the voice of Adam Gore because he's not getting a break. <laughs> not anytime soon. As this is going to be a fly ball out to right field. Right fielder is going to give chase and will squeeze it for the out. They tried to tag up, but a great job of quickly relaying that one in. We'll call that a line out versus a fly out because that was on a rope out there to right field. But again, kudos because I tell you what, it's very easy in cold weather like this to get bundled up and not have the reaction you need on a shot like that. Mm -hmm. But a great reaction out there in right field by Philpott, not only to make the play, but get the ball in quickly enough to not let their runners tag. And we are in that twilight hour where the sky is kind of funny and the lights have just come on, so way to watch. That uh, ball is going to get away from the catcher. Pass ball is going to allow both runners to advance to second and third. So that would be ball one there as this is Tyree at the plate. She had a single that drove in a pair of runs. And she eventually advanced on the, or she did advance on the throw and advanced to third on the pass ball before eventually scoring. See Northwest and South Suburban heading out for the evening. They're actually staying in Fulton, is our friends from South Suburban. That pitch missing for a ball. I've got it 2 0. I don't know what I, it is. I believe that's what it is, but still, Tyree is ahead here. Has a good opportunity. Driving a couple more runs, add to this 5 1 lead. That pitch missed low, and I think she fouled it off. Yeah. Got went down, kind of chopped at it. It's one of those that. I think once she started swinging, she probably like, why are you swinging at this? So a half-hearted swing, a miss there, two and one now is the counter, as Michael said, fouled it off. There's a shot, shortstop gets it. She's gonna look the runner home. Didn't decide to go that way, does throw it over, so that will be a six to three put out, but the RBI for Tyree. So a productive put out there as Turner scores. And also Day Jones heads over to third. There's two outs now in the inning. And ICC now leads this one six to one. And this is going to be Shaw, who had an RBI single. She was replacing the bases by Clemens, who eventually stole the base and scored a run. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? Surprised that the umpire has not called for time yet. We've got some headlights on out there in the outfield. I was wondering about that as well. It's going to be an issue as some of these people leave from the other game. Is that pitch missing low for a ball? 2-0 and now is the count. You know, as vehicles are new now. You crank them up, the lights come on automatically back in... The older day, you have to crank it up and turn the lights on yourself. So a lot of times people just don't realize their lights are on while they sit there. Ground ball off the glove of the pitcher, and that's going to get through for a base hit. I see, see getting all the good breaks today on some of those. Just bouncing right off the pitcher's glove, past the shortstop Clovis. And that will allow Dave Jones to score. And Probus did everything she could to stretch out and try to get that one. And unfortunately, deflected it away from her shortstop. And so now, 7-1, ICC with the lead. And this is going to be Wolf coming back to the plate. She 4-3 on the ground out in her previous at bat. That pitch missing for a ball. I've got 2-0 now is the count. Looks like uh, Kaskia has. Uh, oh, what a play. Wow. And rightfully so, double that one. Or no, actually, that was just a ground ball. I thought it was a line out, but there was two outs. What a play there by Probus. She just missed 
the last play off the edge of her gloves. That one was absolutely tattooed. Look what I found. Was able to have the wherewithal to quickly toss that one over and get the out. 7-1, to one, ICC with the lead. We'll head to a break. Come back with the top of the third here in Tupelo right after this. They say Diet Coke is a mom's drink. Well, you copied her jeans, her spin, her shoes, her scrunchie, and whether you realize it or not, her music. Now, copy her drink. Drink what your mama gave you. Today tastes like staying in. And it never tasted this good. Kirk Herbstreet is a man of many talents. Not only an athlete and a sportscaster, but also an expert cartographer, an amateur alchemist, a surprisingly gifted poet. What rhymes with encroachment? But his true talent lies in the art of banking. With Renaissance Bank's great products, rewards, and easy to use online tools, every transaction is a masterpiece. You might refer to Kirk as a Renaissance man. But I call myself a Renaissance man. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set here for the top of the third inning. ICC up in this one, 7-1. to one. Turner still in the circle here for ICC, and it should be the 1-2-3 batters due up here for the Blue Angels. This is Skaggs, the center fielder. She struck out in the top of the first. And that first one in there for a strike. 1 now is the count. Again, if it sounds a little awkward right now, we're having to cut down our uh, Nat sound that is actually outside the building. We're in front of a glass that does not open here. So every once in a while, somebody will come through and chit-chatting a little bit. A little harmless, no harm, no foul. And so we'll have to kind of pod that down because it is weird to watch a game without any Nat sound sometimes. One and one is the count. There's another Nat sound. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Very natural sound. Yes. One and two now is the count here on Skaggs, the center fielder. Turner in the circle. She's really helped her own cause today. She's two for two with a couple of runs scored and a double. A little like a little check swing, almost a swinging bun, if you will. Foul back. We'll stay at one and two here on Skaggs. The Blue Angels do have uh, another pitcher warming up down the side. Looks like Emily Curtis in as the DP in this game did come in as a relief pitcher in game one as well. So Skaggs taking her time here. Again, it's got to be close to that violation of the 10 seconds because you got 10 seconds to get back in the box and the pitcher has 10 seconds to throw after you do so is it 10 seconds total or 10 seconds when she puts her foot on the rubber what's the that i don't know i just know it's 10 seconds and judging by the way she quickly jumped in the box it may have been 10 total is that one missing low for a ball and the crazy thing is it's a extremely quicker exchange for softball which is typically a faster sport than baseball oh yeah and baseball i think has a 15 second no runner on 20 second with a runner on type rule so you would think the ones that would need to be sped up a little bit more might have the less time but it is what it is foul ball and it hit her as they say she was out of the batter's box when it hit her so batter interference i don't know that she was out that. of the box so that would be batter interference to put out goes to the catcher in the stats. So the two unassisted? Basically. You just do two unassisted with a note. So one away now. And this is Milligan coming to the plate. She takes that first pitch for a strike. She granted out back to the pitcher in the first inning. Seven to one is your score here in the top of the third. Off-speed pitch, and that one. Oh, delayed call, but I thought. Very delayed call. I thought for sure it was a strike. Oh, and two now is the count. And 
And this pitch popped back and out of play, and thank goodness that that game behind us is over with because there was quite the crowd today, and that one might have made contact. Foul ball count will stay 0-2. Turner has two Renaissance Bank strikeouts on the day, looking for a third here. Set up on the outside, couldn't get her to chase one. Good eye, good patience on the part of Milligan there. We're in the top of the third inning, game two. ICC won the first game of the day, 13 to nine. And a game that was back and forth throughout the entire time is ground ball right back to Turner. And she scoops it up, tosses it over. Second time today that Milligan has been retired by Turner on the throwout. So two away now, and this will bring Colvis to the plate. She walked and scored a run, the only run of the game so far, here for the Blue Angels. Two away. Nobody on. That pitch had her dancing a little bit, but called a strike. Got that low inside corner. 0-1 oh, is the count here to Clovis. She's playing shortstop today, or at least here in game two. Pitch right back to the pitcher there. Turner thought best just to get out of the way of that one. Hard hit ball returned to Cinder there. Second hit of the game for the Blue Angels. Clovis reaches for the second time in this game. So now this will bring up Russell to the plate, who absolutely just annihilated a double that Emma Rose Thompson watched go by. I don't even know if she watched it go by. It was hit so hard. I don't know if she saw it. I think she was one of those that she just naturally reacted to the ball coming to her. Yeah, and then shot into the gap in center right. That pitch missing low for a ball here to Russell. She also had that monster three-run home run in the first game of the day. So Russell will dig in, pops this one up, coming right back to us, but not going to get back. Oh, it is actually going to roll up here as it hit the concrete, bounced in front of us, and now it's going to roll back down. If we'd have had one of those open windows, we could have caught that one. We could have. or it, on the, We caught it on the roll. Well, it probably popped up, hit me in the face. I'm, that's going to be a foul ball for strike one. Did you see that in that MLB game? Uh, there was a guy just casually calling the game. He goes, this ball fouled back yes. to me, and it skipped up, hit him in the face. It bounced and popped him. And had the wherewithal to keep going. Yeah, I'm going to say he never missed a beat. You just hear him go, ow, that ball hit me. And it just rolled right back into it. So would you say that broadcasters are athletes too? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm proof that that's not. <laughs> One and two now. As a swing and a miss, four strike three. That is the third Renaissance Bank strikeout of the game there for Turner. Got her on that off-speed inside pitch. Swung right over it. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning with ICC leading at 7-1. to one. Let's hear from Renaissance Bank and be back with more right after this. If this just cost a little bit less. Let's take a look at that with the Renaissance replay. Make the right call with over 400,000 shopping discounts right from the Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking app. Might be a little while before I get to the bank. That's an incomplete pass. Let's give it a Renaissance replay. Renaissance Mobile check deposit. Make the right call and open an account with Renaissance today. This is a place to create your future. And when you get here, you realize you're not alone. You meet new people and make connections. It's not always about knowing exactly where you're going. Sometimes it's about finding your own way. It's working together to build something bigger than ourselves. It's hard work, but lots of fun. We come for the quality education, but we leave with an unparalleled experience. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. Guaranteed Bank, formerly known as First American National Bank, is a proud supporter of ICC Athletics. Visit gbtonline.com. Guaranteed Bank, we're more than a bank, we're a community. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we head now to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be the 7-8-9 batters due up here for the Indians. Thompson, Nichols, and Cooper scheduled up. Still the same pitcher, Purbus. As that pitch skips across 
for ball one. As Michael mentioned, they did have Curtis warming up in the previous inning, but electing to stay with Probus here. Thompson singled in the first inning, but was left on base. 1-0 after that ball in the dirt. And this one fouled back, evens things up now at one and one. So one ball, one strike, seven to one. ICC with the lead here in the bottom of the third inning. And Coach Harness wanting to have a quick word with Emma Rose down there at the third baseline. Like I said, this is a bat that's just waiting to get hot. And they're playing her fairly in, so maybe Coach Ernest saw something she liked and want to give her some advice on how to take advantage of the way they're lining up defensively. And again, I do apologize for the reflection in the glass here. There's nothing we can really do about it. Is that pitch missing for a ball? Two and one now is the count. Hey, they finally showed the count. And it was two of one. So Thompson will dig in. Swings on this one, fouls it off. And two and two now is the count. But you tell everybody's getting cold out there. When you're in the infield, they're out jumping around. And then the dugouts are huddled up next to each other. Two balls, two strikes. No outs as Thompson is starting us off here in the bottom of the third. That pitch high and outside. Three and two now on Thompson. Talking about the weather, I do find it interesting that uh, the majority of the Blue Angels are wearing the hoodie sweatshirts, but none of the ICC players are. There's a hard hit ground ball. Shortstop finds it. Throw across is low, but dug up nicely. Six to three on the putout. Nice dig over there by Jet at first base. And that's going to be out number one. I'm telling you, it's one of those, like, when, when you, and Michael, you've seen it, you're a baseball guy, a softball fan as well, but batters, when they just are in a slump, everything just seems to go straight at, play at them ball. And that's just been the case for Emma Rose here. And I'm telling you, I'm hoping we're getting a broadcasting game and that bat comes to life. That pitch finds the corner for a strike here against Nichols, who struck out looking in her first at bat. Yeah, I think you're right about Thompson. I mean, it's this is only what game eight of the year for ICC. She's got time to dial that in. And this is going to be a slow roller trouble. When I have to hurry, the throw is off. I want to say she would have been safe. And she thought about going to second. Good job there in the right fielder. Yeah, right fielder came in real quick to cover that. So, yeah, it's uh, I think she would have beat that out regardless of the inability to wrap it up. So I would definitely call her a single yeah, on that one. I'm going to call it a single on that one. For sure, but let's give credit where credit's due, man. Philpot, we've called her name a couple of times for some defensive efforts out there. Smart, a lot of times it's cold at night. You don't want to make any extra movement. She was able to back that play up, and she does it. That's an easily advanced to second after the throw. So a hit, no error on the play. As slow roller back to the pitcher. Over in time, that's going to be one to four on the putout of Cooper as the second baseman was covering with the infield coming in off the corners. And now we go back to the top of the lineup here and here comes trouble. Hallie Turner is two for two of the day with a double, a single, two runs scored. And so she's going to try to extend this inning here for the Indians. Well, this is a good sign, Michael. The fire truck that left earlier, it's already back. So maybe they just wanted to go eat supper. Yeah. Now they ain't or maybe it's just a cat that. in a tree. That's true. Something minor. That pitch on the outside corner just missing for a ball. 1-0 is the count here to Turner. Turner would love to help her cause here with the base hit if it's something down to the outfield would score a run. 1-0 pitch on its way. That one's going to miss low. 2-0 now is the count. Not the batter that you want to get behind on. So as good as she's seeing the ball today, she can be more selective with the 2-0 lead here. So the 2-0 pitch coming. And as you said, Michael, could be selective there. Let that one go by as that was borderline pitch that she didn't like. 2-1 and one now is the count. So two balls, one strike, and one out. 
Ball in the dirt. Runner will advance on the pass ball. So now an even better opportunity here for Turner to help her own cause with the base hit. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Runner on third. ICC leading this one 7-1 to one here in the bottom of the third inning. Turner hits that one to the shortstop. Will push the run across. 6-3 to three on the ground out. Run does not score. Oh, it does not count. Out. That's right. I forgot. I only have one out on my board, but there was two. So that will end the inning. 6-3. to three. Good job by the Blue Angels to get out of that inning with no damage done. We've played three here in Tupelo. 7-1. to one. ICC with the lead. We'll take the timeout and come back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Welcome back as we do have some changes here defensively for the Indians as they lead it 7-1. to New player in the game here for the Indians is going to be out in left field, and that is Martin, Tamiya Martin, Tamiya Martin going out there, and then shifting from left field to right field is Lakin Nichols as this pitch fouled back for strike one. So that means Shaw, is that correct? Yes, Shaw, yeah, Shaw right. will exit the ball game. As Jesse Smith getting her workout in. Oh, they're doing jumping jacks at first base. Off speed pitch missing low for a ball. This is Phil Pot at the plate. She grounded out to the second baseman in her first at bat, but we have seen her make some fantastic defensive plays so far in this game. Swings on this one, fouls it back. One and or shoot, yeah, one and two now is the count. So one ball, two strikes, no outs here as Phil Potts starts us off in the inning. Is that pitch missing for a ball? Two and two now is the count. So two balls, two strikes, no outs. Phil Pot at the dish. Turner getting set to deliver. And that pitch just a bit high. Count goes full now at three and two. Well, again, we were trying to see if we can find a light switch to kill these lights to cut back on some of the reflection here as that pitch fouled off. As the sun continues to set, it gets a little bit worse than it was earlier. Luckily, the camera, though, is you can see its reflection, so it's kind of just making it perfect to be able to see the batters. It's a little difficult outside in that central area. 3-2 pitch. Missing low. That'll be a walk to start the inning to Phil Pot. So a runner on first with no out. 7-1 ICC. With the lead here in game two, trying to get the sweep of Kaskaskia. This pitch fouled off the netting, and that'll go for strike one. As Michael has come back from his journey, and let me guess, all the lights are connected. They are. We do have one option that we can try between innings. We'll see. Okay. Is that pitch missing? So, Philpott reached on a walk. 
I believe one and one now is the count. Beautiful sunset over to our left, by the way. There's a swing and a miss there for strike two. So one and two now is the count. As this is Curtis, who is the DP here. This is that pitch outside. I've got it as two and two. We'll see if he shows it this time. He does. There we go. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. Runner at first here. As the Blue Angels trying to spark a rally. And that pitch missing outside. Now the count goes full at 3-2. So full count here to Curtis. Runner at first. That's Phil Pot who started the inning with a walk. Ah, beautiful pitch there for a swinging strike three on Curtis. Great job coming back with the high heat for her fourth Renaissance Bank strikeout of the game. Renaissance Bank, they are the bank that understands you. You can find out why by visiting Renaissance Bank. Dot com. Now this will be Maddie Probus coming to the plate. She is currently the pitcher of record here for the Blue Angels. Looks at that first pitch, and it's in there for a strike. She walked back in the second inning. Later advanced to second on a wild pass pitch, ball. Or wild, wild pitch. pitch, yeah. Read my own notes here. As that pitch... Finds that outside corner for a strike. That animated strike signal he gives us. Yeah, it's one of those when it's close and he wants to call it a strike, he powers it through there. 0-2 oh now is the count. And there's strike. No. Wow. Uh, that just one off bad. the yeah. plate. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call because I thought that last one was a little low. So maybe he just likes the pitches more so low than he does up on the count. Ground ball, second baseman, a chance to turn two here. There's one. And do they get it? Yes, they do. Little Caesars double play for the Indians. Score that one four, six, three to end the inning. Great job there defensively by the Indians. Little Caesars located on South Adams Street right there in Fulton, a proud sponsor of ICC Athletics. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. Another great Saturday at college football. You're always pushing yourself. There's no time to rest. You keep moving forward. The only thing better than your last accomplishment is your next. What's next? What's next? What's next? So Allie, what's next? I guess we'll see. Find a bank that's as excited about your future as you are. A bank that asks. What's next? Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We head now to the bottom of the fourth inning. ICC leading it 7-1 to one here in game two against Kakaskia. Looks like we have some changes made here by the Blue Angels as well. I think number seven, Sarshit, is going to She's going to head out to right field. Right, right. She did the same in game one. I think the second baseman wanted to come out. She saw her coming running towards her, so she started heading to the sideline. They might have a heater over there in the dugout. Might be why. So that would be Phil Pot coming out of the game. For the Indians, this should be Sammy Day Jones at the plate. You do have Smith in the. Yeah, they're making okay. some adjustments here. So the home plate umpire talking with the coach over there at Kaskaskia. And I, say, now he'll I, I come stand over corrected. And, yeah. ICC does have a new player in the on-deck circle, Sadie Stegall from Pontotoc. Looks like she'll be coming in in place of Smith. I'll say this. Both these coaches have done a good job today coming out and getting players opportunities to play. 
And now Kaskaski is going to send in a sub in this situation, so we'll have a new first baseman coming in. And that's what you want to do in these early games. Yes, you want to get the wins, but you also want to put kids in certain situations saying, all right, let's see where you thrive as a player. Where can you best help us when we get to conference play? And so both those coaches have done that well today, or at least in my opinion, well. Sammy Day. Because you are her favorite. Yep. That's, and that she'll is, deny it to her dying day, but she was that, waving at us. <laughs> that is Jordan Heckert checking in to first base. She came in and pitch hit in game one and got a single. But I believe this is her first time in this game. Well, if Sammy Day hits a home run here, yep, that's what I was going to say. She waved at me, and she's going to be – Oh, they dropped, dropped it. dropped the ball. They ought to, that ought to be safe. Let's see what they're going to say. And he, he didn't signal, but he's not making her leave the base. So E3. I believe so. So, unfortunately, oh. Frecker comes in and play immediately goes against her. And that's fitting after she waved at me the way she did, that she does reach on an error. Otherwise, she would have blamed you. Exactly. For the ground out. So, this is going to be Stegall coming to the plate. A multi-sport athlete here at ICC. She was a member of the volleyball team. Freshman out of Pontotoc. She will dig in here in place of Smith. This is her second at-bat of the year. That pitch missing low for a ball. Day will retreat back to first. Did not get far enough away. Not sure about the dugout, but there's definitely some fans with some heaters going now that we're in the darker, colder hours of the night. There's going to be a ground ball, but it's going to go foul. Well, it kind of started rolling back towards the infield. Smart play over there at first base by Heckert to go ahead and reel that one in. And because if you don't, Sadie had already got by her and nobody was covering first. So that was a good job there to grab it and collect the foul ball. Pitch in the dirt. See if he'll show us the count here. I've got 3-1. So does he. Man. Great minds yeah. taking a like. Tunica wasn't so far away. 3-1 now is the count. Stegall fouls that one back, and now the count will go full at 3-2. Seven one is the score in the bottom of the fourth inning. Three two is the count here to Sadie Stegall. All speed, Sadie hits it to the shortstop, bobbles it. Gonna have to hurry, and it's not gonna be in time. Everybody's safe. E six on the play as it kind of just ran up her arm, and that's gonna be one of those. It might be good as cold because look, it kind of came up and popped her in the chin. Have it not been so cold, that one may have hurt a little bit more. As this is going to be Tyree coming to the plate here. Runners on first and second. No outs here. Back-to-back -back errors to start the inning for the Blue Angels. Is that pitch in there? No. Called a ball. It was, a, it was up. And again, when we talk about this Kaskaskia team, this is only their second game of the season. You're seeing a lot of early season mistakes that you're used to seeing out of some of these teams. It'll be some of those that later on this season will work out. Yeah, it's going to be Adam. down to the gap, and that's going to be the, a double here as they're going to try to score two. And they will. And she's going to push and for third. Tyree's going to try to go to third on the throw, she and got she got it underneath it. So it'll be a two run double. That is the fifth RBIs, five RBI on the day, or on this game, I should say, for Tyree. Putting her name in the hat for Indeed. our Samstown Market she Star of the Game. Showing out there. Makes it 9-1 to one now in favor of the Indians. Is that pitch outside for a ball? 1-0 is the count. As this is going to be... This will be Martin who checked Martin. in for Shaw. So Martin will dig in. 1-0 is the count. 
Runner over at third is Tyree after she doubled and advanced on the throw home. Martin takes that pitch for a ball. And Martin's first plate appearance of today. She's had limited chances so far this season, but does have a 214 batting average. 9-1 is the score. Good pitch there, but I don't going to say it ran up high and inside. 3-0 and now is the count here to Martin. This umpire doesn't quite like those high balls like the previous one did. That pitch right down Broadway for a strike. 3-1 now is the count. So waiting the 3-1 offering here. Swung on and missed. Tried to check her swing, but a slap hitter. Her momentum carried her through the swing. 3-2 now is the count. Nice job by Probus to come back and force the count to go full here. Martin fouls this one off. Good job finding a piece of that off-speed pitch to keep the at-bat alive. Again, we'll be back here tomorrow at 1 o'clock, ICC in South Suburban. Looking to tie up tomorrow afternoon. Be right back here on the Red Channel. Hope to see you guys there. As there's a grounder up the middle. Great play by Probus. And nobody's covering first. And again, Runner the throw home, home and there's no tag. Uh -oh. And now Martin is going to be out at second. The run does count. So a single and RBI. Yep. Single and an RBI there. And then two to, I believe, six on the putout. As ICC now leads it 10 to one. Two outs in the inning. Is that right? No. No, that's the first that's out of the inning. That's the first inning. out of the inning. As Day Jones, Smith, and Tyree have all scored. That pitch in there for a strike as this is number 15. Hold on. I can They've changed, a couple of them have changed numbers today. I want to say that. So Wolf has come out, and this is. I want to say that's Whitfield. Let me uh, double check the photo of the roster I had earlier. And of course the one I had earlier is not showing. So by the time I figure out who it is, they'll probably have already hit the ball by now. That is Whitfield. As she fouls this one off, and umpire immediately caught a foul ball like it came off her foot. 10-1 ICC with lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One out here. Whitfield digging in, waiting for the pitch. That one missing outside. I'll be honest, I have no clue what the count is. <laughs> we were trying to find who the batter was. I will say Whitfield in game one went one for three with a single and an RBI. Swing and a miss. No, they're going to say she fouled it off. I'm going to say two and two. There's two. And there's two. On the money once again. So two balls, two strikes, and one out here for Whitfield at the plate. Nobody on base here for the Indians. They lead it 10 to 1. Swing and a miss, four strike three. Nice job coming back to get the Renaissance Bank strikeout. I've got that as her second of the game for Probus. I also have that. And so now with two away, this is going to be Lauren Brown, freshman from Caledonia, checking in for Thompson. So Brown will dig in here. Takes up that first pitch, and that one called a strike. Wow. I think that's one of those where the umpire looked up, saw a 10-1 game, and got a little chilly, so decided to call that pitch strike one. I do you believe this is Brown's first plate appearance of the year? 
Looks like that one is in there for strike two. 0 oh and 2 now is the count. So Brown have to come in and guard the dish here. Probus trying to get out of this inning here. Skips that one across for ball one. I take that back. That is this is her second plate appearance of the year. Looking for her first hit. This one fouled off, and so we'll stay at one and two. So Brown looking now to Coach Ernest, getting the signal. One and two is the count here to Lauren. Swings on this one, chops it to the second baseman, bobbles it, can't find it. And that'll be the third error of the inning on the Blue Angels. And now we'll have Nichols come back to the plate. She is one for two on the day with a single and a strikeout. So Lakin will dig in. Looks at that first pitch, high for a ball. Look at you, Michael, this umpire, he's established. He likes him about midway low. Not, mm -hmm. Hasn't been given very much up in the zone today. 1-0 is the count. Chopper, third baseman, finds it. Nobody covering first once again. Yeah, well, they had the corners in that time, miscue. and that's a single because just no throw, no, no, throw, no option there. Again, this is what we say, folks, and this is a good coaching opportunity that you see the Kaskia coach coming out and taking advantage of here. This is only their second game of the season. Probably have not had very many opportunities to practice outdoors with the way their weather is. So you're going to see these type of mental mistakes early on the part of the Blue Angels. And just like any coach would do in any situation, you have a golden opportunity to have a coaching moment. That's what he did. You didn't see him come out and yell, berate the girls whatsoever. He just came out and went over how to cover that situation for the next opportunity. So tip of the cap is what I'm trying to say. Indeed, also allows everyone to take a minute and breathe. With two outs, you're looking to you know, just close this inning out if you're Probus and the Blue Angels. So gives everybody a second to collect their thoughts. They are playing in very far on Cooper. So Cooper at the dish with the runner at second. Two outs here still in the inning. That first pitch missing low for a ball. Cooper 0 for 2 today. It's grounded out to the shortstop and to the pitcher as well. Well, instead of runner at second, there's actually a runner at first and second for the Indians. Is that yes. pitch missing? Brown advanced to second on that single by Nichols. So 2 0 is the count here to Cooper. Someone cleaning up outside. That pitch in the dirt gets away, and good idea there by ICC. That was Brown at second. She couldn't pick up where the ball had went and actually did not get away from the catcher. Kind of just stayed underneath her that time. She couldn't locate it quick enough. By the time she would have, probably would have had a pretty easy throw out at third. Yeah, Colvis did a great job of covering third in that situation. That one's going to be in there for a strike. Three and one now is the count here to Cooper. She's 0 for 2 today. She grounded out to the pitcher. Also shortstop. That's the third. The throw over is in time. 5 to 3 to retire Cooper and in the inning, but not before ICC puts three more on the board. They lead at 10 to 1 as we'll head to the top of the fifth. Indians three outs away from calling an early night here. We'll see if they can do it, but can the Blue Angels rally? We'll find out when we come back with more right after this. Davis Ford in Fulton is built on customer service. It's been a founding pillar of Davis Ford since opening our doors in 1964. We are proud to announce winning the 2022 Ford President's Award for customer service. Davis Ford was the only dealer in Mississippi to achieve this award, marking a record setting 20th time. Davis Ford would like to say thank you to our valued customers. We wouldn't be here without you and your commitment to us. 
Ooh, bumble. Let's give her a Renaissance replay. Make the right call with Renaissance and get cell phone protection with Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking. Sign up today. Five dollars for my own money? That's a bad call. Let's give him a Renaissance replay. Sign up for Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking with ATM refunds today. And welcome back now as we head to the top of the fifth inning. ICC leading it 10 to 1 here. We've got multiple changes. Whitfield to third base. Stegall to first base. Like Chloe Shelton, a freshman from Selma, Tennessee, checking in at catcher. So she'll come in behind the plate. Martin will still be out in left field. Day Jones, center field. And is that out there in right, Michael? Uh, is that can't Jones tell for the, or for Nichols? The, Probably oh, Nichols. The, uh, it's Nichols. Blue Angels do have a different hitter here. This is Heckert batting in place of Jet as she checked in for her defensively last time. That pitch missing low for a ball. Hecker had one at bat in game one. She got a single on a, I mean, excuse me, she re, she, yes, she got a single and was thrown out on a fielder's choice. She's got a 2-0 count here from Turner. Is that pitch in there for a strike? Two and one now is the count. Turner trying to go the distance or at least get the, uh, get things taken care of here in the top of the fifth. As we said ICC leading this one 10 to one. They get three outs here without giving up multiple runs as that's going to be a foul ball rolling back out of play. Heck of an effort there by Turner to try to get to it. It is to get a run rule win here. Two and two now is the count. Here to Heckert. Kaskaski will be in action tomorrow at Northwest. As this one popped up. Drifting and it's going to get out of play. And so we'll stay at two and two. You're not in a weird sci fi movie. That was a ladybug that just crawled in front of the camera. Maybe the same one that landed on my mic. Just might have been. Ago. Might have been. Two and two now is the count. And that pitch missing low. Now the count goes full at three two. And now, can you tell if Heckert went Hecker, to talk? Yeah, Heckert went first to talk, and then Catcher's going to go talk to Turner as well. I'll remind you of some of our sponsors, the ICC Alumni Association and Foundation Broadcast Booth is where we're at today. You also got the ICC Wesley Foundation, the ICC Baptist Student Union. Uh, you've got Raising Canes right down the road from us here in Tupelo, a proud sponsor of today's action. Also, Fagata's Mexican Restaurant is right next to the soccer field and the Davis Event Center there in Fulton. Max Home. And Prior Mara Architects. Kind of a tongue tire to say there. Is that pitch missing? This should be ball four. But he says ball three. So I was wrong. Not the first time, not the last time that I happened. Round ball, short stop, bobbles it, gets it, throws it over, and gets the out. Heck of a job over there at short that time. Has kind of bobbled the ball. Didn't hit that panic button. That's what you see a lot of times. They panic and kind of make the situation worse. Grabbed it, had the wherewithal to kind of take a breath, throw it over, and get the out. Yeah, she stayed with it, gathered it up in the glove, made a nice throw over to first. And this is going to be Jackson coming to the plate. She granted out to second in her only plate appearance so far at this game. And this one hit sharply, fouling out of play for strike one. Remind you, we'll be back here tomorrow. Softball versus South Suburban in a doubleheader. As that pitch misses low. One and one now is the count here to Jackson. Jackson. 
Turner trying to pick up the win. And she got the start today. As this pitch fouled off, strike two. She's had plenty of run support today. Michael, the bats have looked sharp again. They had, what, I think 19 hits in the first game. Indeed. Seven, ten so far here in game two. And, of course, Turner helping herself out quite a bit as well. And that pitch in the dirt. But draws even now at two and two. So two balls, two strikes, one out. Nobody on here. Jackson at the plate. We'll go back to the top of the lineup with Skaggs. Unless there have been some more changes made. As there's a flare out to right field. Nichols will grab it for out number two. So two away now. Indians looking to close this game out, get the sweep with one more out. And we do have a new batter in in this situation as well. This looks like Russell, possibly, or is it, yeah, Russell. Yeah, number 24. No. Or is it 44? It's 44. 44. So Degler. that is Degler, yeah. who also checked in as a pinch batter in game one. She'll come in with a opportunity to try to spark a two-out rally here. For the Blue Angels, they trail it 10-1 to 1 here in the top of the fifth inning. She popped out in foul territory to the first baseman back in game one in her only plate appearance in that game. Remind you to stay tuned. We'll have the Renaissance Bank postgame show. We'll immediately move into that at the conclusion of this one as there's a ground ball to the shortstop. Picked up, throw over in time, and that should do it. It does. ICC picks up the win, 10-1. So 10-1 is your final in favor of the Indians. ICC gets the win, and Michael, I think we're both going to agree on this one. Hallie Turner, our Samstown Market star of the game. Indeed. She does a fine job on the, on the bump. I believe she has one, two, three, four Renaissance Bank strikeouts. And she only goes, gave up two hits. Yeah, uh, and then goes – Two for three at the plate, scoring run, two runs as well. So all around a great performance by Halley in this game. So the Indians pick up the sweep of Kaskaskia. That's their first two games of the season. We do wish them the best of luck throughout the rest of the year. Got a very good softball team. Hope you guys back home uh, get behind them and help support them throughout the rest of the season as well. Don't be surprised if this team makes another deep push towards postseason play. ICC will be back in action here tomorrow at 1 o'clock when they play host to South Suburban. We do encourage you to come out. I know the weather's going to be a little cold, so if you don't want to fight the weather, you can join us right back here on the Red Channel. I'm Adam Gore from Michael Lupton and Raphael Henry saying so long from Tupelo. ICC gets the 13-9 game one win, 10-1 win in game two to sweep Kaskaskia. Have a good evening, and as always, Roll Tribe. Another great Saturday at college football. You're always pushing yourself. There's no time to rest. You keep moving forward. The only thing better than your last accomplishment is your next. What's next? What's next? What's next? So, Allie, what's next? I guess we'll see. Find a bank that's as excited about your future as you are. A bank that asks, What's next? Renaissance Bank. Understanding you.